الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمدك اللهم سبحانك كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك نحمدك اللهم آناء الليل وأطراف النهار معترفين بسلطانك عاملين شاكرين لنعمائك أبو الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يديم علينا نعمه ظاهرة وباطنة وأن يلهمنا العزم والعزيمة والصبر والثبات على أن نحمده على تلك النعماء اللهم آمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت وهو على كل شيء قدير كهادة قامت بها السماوات والأرض أدعو الله سبحانه وتعالى ألا يحرمنا إياها لحظة لقائه اللهم آمين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم اجزه عنا غير ما تجزي به مرسلا ونبيا اللهم شفعه فينا كفاعة لا نعذب بعدها أبدا اللهم اسقنا من حوضه تربة لا نضمع بعدها أبدا اللهم أمين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رب القلوب ودواؤها وعافية الأبدان وشفاؤها ونور الأبصار وضياؤها صلى عليك الله يا علم الهدى ما هبت النسائم وما ناحت على الحيك الحمائم My dear respected brothers and sisters of Islam our dear sons and daughters of the future of Islam inshaAllah Rabbil Alameen As I promised to you earlier, we'll continue having some reflection upon the 2016 presidential election. How we can analyze what happened, what is going on now, how we can benefit from, how we can prepare ourselves for the future, and all of the above would be put as you always see it with me in here in our Masjid, Masjid Iman, to be put in its Islamic perspective. I'm not going to share with you any of my own personal opinion. I will keep it to myself. But I would share with you what Islam is teaching us when such a thing is happening. And as we all know, this revelation, this wahi, kalam Allah, the teaching of Allah, the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be applicable for whenever, wherever till the day of judgment. So some people would say, what Islam would be saying about presidential election of the year uh, 2016? It does say a lot. And I will share with you. I will share with you. Yesterday we were having a uh, an inner faith uh, meeting. I, I wasn't really surprised to hear from many people who are attending, uh, reflecting upon the election. They are, is what they said, some of them confused, in sadness, in grief, depressed not know what to do, how the future would look like, what might happen, and, and uh, all of those very short statements coming from uh, American-born people, not one like me who came to this country later in his life. Anyway, we had a brief discussion. But this is, this, is, this is the atmosphere, this is the environment, uh, unpredictable, we do not know what the future is hiding for us, and so on and so forth. And, and as a human being, if we live in a dark room, do not know what is around us, what is going on, what's happening, what might happen, we'll be confused, no doubt about it. Uh, you cannot predict any, anything. But anyhow, for us Muslims, 
what happened mainly as I have mentioned before in several of our Friday sermon it is mainly and we have to understand it this way not the other way around it is a wake up call a wake up call Muslims wake up enough sleep either here or somewhere else there is no more time to waste there is no any effort to say it is not needed no wake up understand what is going on and try to reflect upon what is happening and again and again in according to the teaching of Quran and the teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't, don't keep your opinion to yourself keep your view to yourself but, but this is our guidance and without that guidance we cannot move ahead even one inch ahead of us so it has to be coming from from uh, this guidance there wake up for those who took the back seat this year in the election no please come forward be more active be more participants be in that voting whatever that system is but to contribute to the welfare of this society this country this we're living in and since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that wherever I am I am a Muslim I follow the teaching of Allah I contribute as much as I can to the welfare to the community to the society to the country I'm living in no matter what here with people be more progressive we cannot be negative about things around us going on now. To be more positive and we have to be more active. Activism is, is badly needed nowadays. And if we're not as Muslims, not being active, participating, being more progressive, we'll lose a lot. And when ayyamu baynana. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us to live for a while and will remind each other and say, look, if we did such and such and such, this would be the outcome. But since we did not do such and such and such, this is the negative outcome. So we have to be more progressive, more active, participate, don't take the back seat, don't say someone else will do it for me, I'm safe and secure in here and so on and so forth. And the following point is that never lose hope. And the hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. Al-Aman. Never. No matter what is going on around you. No matter the negativities. No matter what, what, what would make my life the worst miserable life ever. Hope is still there. That's the teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have to work for it. Or if we despair and say, no, I give up. No, I, I cannot do anything anymore. No, all the powers around me are more credible, more uh, I cannot. No. Keep struggling. And I'm not saying keep fighting. We're, we're not here to fight. Anyway, no. Keep struggling. Struggling with the real and the deep meaning of it. Struggling. With whatever the power Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Now, we come to the tangible things. How we can learn from the previous nations before us. How they overcome their crisis, their challenges, their ways when they look around and see everything is so dim, is so depressing no hope whatsoever we cannot do anything can we learn from them that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is including all of those stories of the prophets and messengers as leaders along with their people either some followers or some against that leadership which is actually the guidance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what happened to them in order to learn from them and say if that situation here is the leadership the followers good or bad believing or not believing 
And here is the outcome. Here is what happened. And we can go on and on and on in those stories. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that wonderful wisdom, it is included in there in order to study them, to comprehend them, to understand them and apply what would help us nowadays. As if we're speaking now, December of 2016, and coming to four years till 2020. Let me start with Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. And Allah Rabbi will say, Adam and Eve, Adam and Hawa, and what they do with the uh, presidential election with the 2016. They were uh, yeah, running for some election there in Jannah, and they were recruiting and campaigning who's gonna, who's gonna elect Adam, who's gonna elect Hawa, Eve. No, it's much deeper than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put them in Jannah. Adam and Eve, whatever you ask for, you get it. Jannah, paradise. They don't even have to walk. No, 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 no. It's just even wishing for, for something to have. But at the beginning, of course, you know, being created miraculously, Adam and Eve, Allahu Akbar, uh, yani asking the malaika angels, you bow down for Adam. All the malaika, all the malaika except one, they said, You said it, Ya Allah, we obey. Except Shaitan, Iblis. They said, Are you asking me to bow down to him? No, 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 no way, no way. And you have created him from clay, and you have created me from fire, and you ask that one you have created from fire to bow down to someone you create from clay? Yani, it doesn't work this way. This is ayat of the Quran. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach us something. Ta'atullahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. The obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here is Adam and here is all the angels. And I'm asking you to bow down. Bow down not, not in acts of worship by the way. No. no. Acts of, of, of respect and in, in, in terms of recognition. He will have a specific mission to do, not here in the heaven, but down there on earth. Yani, uh, he said, no way, I'm, I'm not going to go. Okay, if, if you choose uh, so, take a side. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him in that position to come till the day of judgment to each and every single human being to convince them, to sway them away from the hijrah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do something bad to end up in the hellfire. And in the meantime, Adam there as a prophet in order to help us and guide us to the best thing to do. And you choose. Now you choose which way you want to go. Which way you want to... You got my, mes my, my message? Choose. Adam or Iblis, without going in any detail. Choose. Okay? You got my message. I'm sure you do. Adam now is in Jannah. Along with Eve. Okay, Adam, you eat. You enjoy. But of course, as, as we know, the argument, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling all the angels. I'm sending someone to earth in order to represent me on earth. Not to live in heaven anymore. No, 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 no. You, you lived in heaven for a while. Now it is time. What was the answer from the Malaika? How come you send someone who would make يعني, corruption and mischief on land? And this is what happened, by the way. This is what we see today. While us malaika, whatever you order us with, we obey you. Yeah, this is khalqullahi lil malaika. Yani, yutu'un allaha ma amarahum, wa yaf'aluna ma yu'marun. Yani, be in a full, absolute obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now you send him down for people to uh, do a lot of mischief and corruption. Meaning, I am giving you the instruction. 
I'm giving you the, teacher, the, the, the teaching. I'm giving you uh, the way in order to follow, and you will see. You will see. Yet, he's telling Adam and Eve again and again and again, eat from whatever you want to eat. Enjoy. Have fun. Accept that truth. Don't eat anything from it. The truth. Somehow, as a human being, Adam and Eve did not listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were persuasive enough to uh, know this right. You have everything around you. Why that one? Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a test from Allah. Don't eat from this forbidden tree. Don't. And both of them, and this is according to Islam, not according to Christianity, because Christianity are saying that it was Eve who convinced and persuaded Adam to eat from the forbidden tree. That's why she did this, and that's the outcome. No, no, it was both of them. Both of them together. They pick up the apple and disobey Allah and eat from it. What was the outcome? Now, Adam, since you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you and Eve, you have no place in Jannah anymore in paradise anymore that luxurious life does not belong to you anymore go down to earth develop the land this is your mission now and they were apart from each other by the way for so many years till they get together and if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me to follow this way his way why some Muslims nowadays do not follow the way of Allah? They choose to follow the way of shaitan. The way of their own ego. Their own things. You know, I want to do this because I want to do this and that's it. Now I'm not going to follow it. No, follow this exactly as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you. You will never be much better than Adam and Eve. If you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here is the consequence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you, no more in Jannah, go somewhere else. Be in earth. They came on earth, subhanAllah. And they have their offspring, us. But subhanAllah, we have seen the first crime in the history of mankind. Qabil wa Habil. Qabil wa Habil, two sons of Adam and Eve. And there are two sisters. Who should marry who? Okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them to offer something for Allah in order to show their obedience. Yani one did and the other one did not. So Qabil felt so jealous of Habib. So he decided to kill his brother. To kill his brother. And he did. Remember. The brother to kill his brother. And he did. But he didn't even know how to bear his brother. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him a ghurab. And that bird in order to show him how to bear his, his brother. Why that story is including me? Sometime brothers would come and fight each other and kill each other and take revenge of each other how you can benefit from this we're talking about adam and eve qabil and habil we're talking about this december 2nd of 2016 brothers are killing each other i'm saying killing i'm not saying yani, uh, cheating or confiscating their wealth or money Killing. Killing. You want to do the same as Qabil and Habib? Or we learn from it because there is something ahead of us, the development of the land, and participate in many elections to come, and we would rather take the back seat and say, no, I have no business to do this. Let's fight each other. Let's kill each other. Which way? Which way? You decide. You decide. Let those who want to kill each other away. Let them kill each other. But now, Ya Allah, this is your way. I'm going to follow your way. I will follow your way. And this is the beauty of the relationship of leadership and followers. Good followers follow the good leadership there in order to develop, in order to advance, in order to be more progressive, in order to serve their community. 
So no matter is going on around us of killing or torturing or prison or jail or whatever, I will take the way of Allah. That's it. Yani that party would tell me, here is our platform, if you do this and this and this, and this you'll be the best ever. And another party would say, no, 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 forget about this. If you do this and this and this, you'll be the best ever. And I say, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I understand the platform of your party, but here is the teacher of Allah. I'm going to follow the teacher of Allah. No matter what. No matter what. And we have to be smart. We have to be smart. How to choose the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not here, wallahi, wallahi, and I'm saying this from the pulpit of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We're not here to fight anyone. We're not here to kill anyone. We're not here. We're just being in that struggle and strive to have this community the best community ever. By participating, being more progressive and follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it, it, the story would be here and look at the offspring of Adam and Eve which is us who is good and who is not good who follow the teaching of Allah and who did not follow the teaching of Allah who follow the, the behavior of Qabil or who follow the, the behavior of his brother choose your way in order to be advanced learn from them and generation after generation after generation you would see us all over Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Adam and Eve, how we can learn from them, whether they are in Jannah, where they are with the Malaika, where they are obedience or disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, eat from this or do not eat from this, follow the way of Allah and you will see the best of your life ever. The outcome would be great. But it needs work. It needs struggling. Never take the back seat and say, someone will do it on behalf of you. No. You have some specific tasks to do. You have some specific homework. At your workplace, be the best ever. Compete with yourself even, not with people around you. I am here to be the best. At school, not less than straight A's as a student. I'm here to be the best. In my career, I will do this and this and this in order to be promoted. This is the way for us Muslims to survive and to contribute and to be the best ever, wallahi. This is the way, subhanAllah, I understand it from the deen and Islam. لَازِلْنَا فِي رَحَابِ الْمُصْطَفَى الْبِرُّ لَا يَبْلَى وَالْذَنْبُ لَا يُنْسَى وَالْدَّيَّانُ لَا يَمُونَ كُلُّ بْنَ آدَمَ خَطَّاءَ وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِنَ التَّوَابُونَ وَالتَّائِئُونَ الذَّنْبِ كَمَنْ لَا نَمْبَلَى إِلُوا اللَّهُ وَأَنْتُمْ مُوْقِنُونَ بِالْإِ الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى الحمد لله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأصلي وأسلم على رسول الله صباتا وتسليما يليقان بالحبيب المصطفى النبي المجتبى صلوات ربي وسلام عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وتابعيه وتابعيه تابعيه إلى يوم الدين ودي رسبت البادرز والسستر الإسلام your sons and daughters of the future of Islam إن شاء الله رب العالمين challenges facing us problems are facing us Many homeworks we have to do, many